Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes. And Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. 
Before her were three paths. One path had bear footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints. And the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up match the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. 
he ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. One Sunday, Tom told his brother Dan that he was going hiking with his friend Chris. The next Saturday, the police found Tom unconscious in the forest. Dan said he had been working all week. As for Chris, he was found wandering along the highway. He explained that he had gotten lost in the forest almost immediately after they had arrived and just found his way home. One of the guys was lying. Who was it? Look at Chris. He's too well-shaven for a man who spent a week in the woods. There are five girls in the room. Ashley is drawing, Olivia is reading, Maria is playing hide-and-seek, and Emma is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Maria, of course. What number is missing? A small hint, it's not number 4. Number 5 is missing. The subsequent number of 234 is 235. In the small town of Sunshine Valley, three teachers went on a sick leave all on the same day. Jenna says she got into a car accident and broke her leg, so she can't walk. Emma complained she had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck, so she can't turn her head. And Tina says she fell from a bike and fractured her arm. But one of them is lying. Can you tell who? It's Jenna. If she can't walk, why does she even have a crutch to hold her up? If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible? The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting costs nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why? Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to, the hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, 
you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other. There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, the other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. You walk up to the edge of a forest when suddenly you see a man in swimming trunks, goggles, and a snorkel going out of the thicket and falling on the ground as if exhausted. But you know the nearest body of water is several miles away. How did the weird man end up in the forest? There was a huge forest fire, and the plane that was extinguishing it had to scoop up water from the lake several miles away. Doing it, it accidentally captured the man snorkeling in the lake. He was dropped down together with the water and miraculously survived. Upon receiving an anonymous tip, the police rushed to a house where a suspect was said to be. They have no physical description, but they do know his name is John. When the cops reach the place, they see four people sitting at a table. A carpenter, a firefighter, a truck driver, and a mechanic. None of which have name tags on their uniforms. Without a moment's hesitation, they arrest the firefighter. So how did they know that's their guy? The firefighter was the only man in the room. All the others at the table were women and couldn't be named John. 
A man and his wife are driving down a highway when they run out of gas. So the husband decides to walk to the nearest gas station, which is about an hour's walk away. Before he heads off, he tells his spouse to stay in the car and lock all the doors and windows. The wife, bored and wanting to entertain herself, turns on the radio only to hear some shocking news. A notorious criminal has escaped from prison and was last seen on that very highway where the car is sitting. The reporter on the news gives a very detailed description of the escapee. The wife gets so scared that she quickly turns off the radio. She double-checks all the locks, but when she looks up, she sees the escapee just a few feet away from the car. When the man returns, he finds the car still all locked up, but his wife is nowhere to be seen. How is it possible? The answer is simple. The couple had been driving a convertible with the top down, and the woman wasn't, dare we say, terribly bright. An adventurer found a treasure chest in a cave that was guarded by a pirate. He had three keys, gold, silver, and black, but only one of them could open the chest. The pirate would give the adventurer only one chance to reach the treasure. If he chose the right key, he could take the chest. If he chose incorrectly, the pirate would attack him. The only clue was this cipher. Which is the right key? The cipher is an anagram. Shuffle the letters a bit and you'll get the golden key. The adventurer went away unscathed, and the pirate was left frustrated and treasureless. You ready? Here's another brain-busting workout for you. And off we go! After classes, Margot was studying in the library. At one point, she left for the bathroom. When the girl returned, she found out her wallet was gone. Margot immediately called the police. The librarian said she'd seen some guy, but she had poor eyesight and couldn't remember what he looked like. After listening to her vague description, the police officers questioned three students. Owen said he had been studying and hadn't even left his desk until the police arrived. Finn said he'd seen the girl but never really paid attention to her. He was looking for some books. Lucas said he'd been busy talking to his friend on the phone. He hadn't seen anything. Can you figure out who stole the wallet? It was Luca. He said he'd been talking on the phone, but it's prohibited in the library. If he had used his phone, he'd have been immediately kicked out. So he's lying. During a casual walk deep in the forest, Esme got lost. After hours of wandering, she saw a witch's house. Esme asked the elderly woman to show her the way back. The witch refused, but she was in a good mood and offered a deal. She gave Esme three apples. Two of them were poisoned, and one was okay to eat. The girl had to pick one apple and bite into it. If she didn't get poisoned, the witch would show her the way home. Esme was a smart girl and managed to do it. How did she know which apple to pick? In one apple, there was a worm which means it was safe to eat. A student was having an exam and he was about to fail it. The professor decided to give him one more chance and asked the last question. It was, what's my oldest daughter's name? The student was puzzled. The professor decided the question was too hard and gave the guy a hint. He wrote down three numbers, 58, 3, and 11. Can you help the student answer the question? It's a chemistry class. The riddle must be related to the subject. Have a look at the periodic table. The 58th element is cerium, or CE. The third element is lithium, Li. And the 11th element is sodium, or Na. If you put all of them together, you'll get the name Selena. 
The professor liked the game. When another student was struggling with his task, he gave him another puzzle. The man said, I have daughters. All of them, except two, have dark hair. All of them, except two, have blonde hair. And all of them, except two, have red hair. How many daughters do I have? Can you help the student out? This time, the riddle has nothing to do with chemistry. Pure logic. The professor has three daughters. One of them has dark hair, the second is blonde, and the third daughter has red hair. Ben was walking in the park at night when someone knocked him out and stole all his stuff. The guy went to the police. Three people, Cole, Jerry, and Bernard, were in the park at that time. They got arrested. The detective gave each of them a marker and asked them to write their names on the whiteboard. As soon as they finished, he immediately arrested the right person. Who was guilty? And how did the detective find it out? It was Jerry. Ben was hit from the right. It means the person who did it was left-handed. Among the three suspects, that's only Jerry. Hmm, really? Ben and Jerry? I think I need some ice cream. A member of an expedition to the South Pole found himself in a frozen cave. He didn't remember what had happened, but he knew he had to get out. The man saw three doors and a note saying what was behind each of them. Behind the first door, there was a hungry polar bear. Behind the second door, there was a room filled with poisonous gas. And behind the third, there was a room with sharp icicles falling from the ceiling every second. Which door should the man choose to survive? He should pick the first door. He's at the South Pole. There are no polar bears there. After classes, Nora stayed at the university. She needed to finish her project. She was sitting in the hallway. Soon, she got hungry. The girl went to grab some food and left all her stuff behind. When Nora returned, she checked her things and called the police. She told them what had happened and reported her wallet stolen. There were three other students nearby. All of them were questioned. Kennedy said she had been texting her friends. Ethan said, I did sit close to Nora for a while, but I didn't see or touch her wallet. Gabriella said she had been in the classroom and just walked out a couple minutes before. The detective listened to them and left without arresting anyone. Why? The detective remembered that Nora had gone to get some food. It means the wallet was with her and couldn't be stolen. The girl lied. Three women, Sarah, Mila, and Eleanor, went shopping. Two of them are pregnant, and one is a professional watermelon thief. Yeah, I know, but just humor me. Can you tell which one stole the watermelon? It's Mila. She's wearing heels. It's not the kind of shoes pregnant women would wear. Aurora was spending her summer in the countryside. She often took long walks in the forest alone. One day, she saw a huge mansion. It was obvious no one lived there, so she entered the house. It was dusty inside, but still beautiful. Aurora took some pictures and left the place. When the girl came back home, she looked through her photos. She wanted to pick the best ones to post on her social media. But then she saw one of the photos and screamed. Take a careful look at this photo. Can you see what scared her so much? Aurora noticed she, herself, was in the photo. But it's impossible. She was alone in the house. Stella and Adeline were sisters. Their grandmother once presented Adeline a bracelet. But both girls love this piece of jewelry very much. So sometimes, Stella snuck into her sister's room and borrowed the bracelet. 
One day, Adeline came home and noticed the bracelet was gone. She knocked on her sister's door. Stella opened the door, realized it was her sister, and shut it again. In a couple of minutes, Adeline managed to break into the room. She started searching for the bracelet. Stella told her that this time, she hadn't taken Adeline's jewelry. Adeline didn't find anything and had to leave. But on her way out, she remembered something and managed to get her bracelet back. Where was it? When Stella opened the door, she had her hair down. But later, she already had her hair tied up. In those few minutes, she made a bun and hid the bracelet in her hair. On a rainy summer night, Mrs. Miller came home after work. Her neighbor, Mrs. Smith, visited her. The women wanted to have some tea together. Mrs. Smith said her daughter was at a party. She met one of Mrs. Miller's triplet sons there. Mrs. Miller asked which one it was, but her friend didn't know. Her daughter could never tell the guys apart. The problem was all three of them were grounded and weren't allowed to go out until the next week. Mrs. Miller wanted to find out who had broken the rules. She called the boys and asked how they'd spent the day. Ian, the artist, said, In the evening, I was outside drawing. Ryan, the musician, said, I spent all day inside writing a new song. Luke, who likes sports, said, I did a workout and spent the rest of the day reading. Mrs. Miller understood which of her sons was lying and grounded him for another month. Who's the liar and how did she know? Ian lied. He said he'd been drawing outside, but it was raining. Another day, another walk in the forest, and Esme got lost again. And still, she managed to find the way to the witch's house. This time, the woman had another task for Esme. The witch gave Esme a candy bar and a knife. She was going to perform seven tricks. After each of them, Esme had to give her one-seventh of the bar. But there was a catch. The knife was magical and could only make two cuts. It was also impossible to break the bar or cut it without the knife. How did Esme fulfill these conditions and return home? Esme made two cuts, dividing the bar into the following pieces, one-seventh, two-sevenths, and four-sevenths. After the first trick, she gave the witch the one-seventh piece. After the second one, the girl offered the woman the two-seventh piece and took away the one-seventh. After the third trick, she gave the witch the smallest piece back. After the fourth trick, Esme took away the first two pieces and gave the woman the four-seventh piece. Then she gave her the smallest piece again. After the sixth trick, the girl took away the one-seventh and gave the witch the two-seventh piece. And after the last trick, she gave the woman the smallest part of the bar again. Bonus question! Hey, if Esme is so smart, how come she keeps getting trapped in the forest? I have no answer. Carl and his wife Olivia had dinner. They ate the same dishes. French fries, some fish, and vegetable salad. Half an hour later, Carl felt unwell and called the ambulance. But when specialists arrived, he was already unconscious. The man was immediately taken to a hospital. Luckily, doctors had enough time to save him. When they figured out what was wrong with Carl, everyone was shocked. The man had been poisoned. But how could it happen? He and his wife ate the same dishes, but Olivia was perfectly fine. Even more surprising, the next day, the police arrested the woman for trying to poison her husband. How come? Olivia made all the dishes not salty enough and put poison in the salt shaker. Peter graduated from the police academy and began to work as a trainee detective. One week after the guy started his new job, he already had the first tricky case on his hands. One of his colleagues was investigating a series of crimes connected with smuggling. She was close to solving the case. But several days ago, 
the woman disappeared. Peter visited the last location where his colleague was spotted and found a note. 710-577-35-34-5508-517718. Peter has three suspects. Bill, a manager in an oil company. Todd, a jeweler. And John, a car dealer. Who's the criminal? Peter has managed to prove he deserves his detective badge. The guy turned the message upside down and tried to read it that way. Surprisingly, the letters made rather legible words. Bill is boss. He sells oil. Something went wrong in a super secret laboratory. There was a leak of a newly developed experimental chemical, and it made several plants and animals mutate in the blink of an eye. Scientists ended up locked in one room with the vicious monsters. One of the researchers managed to figure out how they could get out of this dire situation. But the substance they needed was in another part of the laboratory. The scientists could get there through one of three corridors. The first was guarded by fire-breathing crocodiles. Hey, it was an experimental laboratory after all. The second corridor was filled with meat-eating sunflowers with extra sharp teeth. And the third passage was swarming with venomous bees. Which one should the scientists choose? They should opt for the corridor with the sunflowers. Those are plants, and however scary they are, they can't move. Terry and Alice fell in love and started going out. But the woman's best friend, Sarah, was jealous of their relationship. Alice didn't want to lose her friendship and tried to keep the dates with her boyfriend in secret. That's why she left him coded messages with the places where they were going to meet. That day, Terry found a new note. It looked like this. At first, he was puzzled, but soon enough, he realized where he was going to see Alice. Can you figure it out? Alice told Terry to meet her at the street corner. Patrick called the police. The man seemed to be worried sick. My wife Victoria took our dog for a walk in the afternoon. Several hours ago, our pooch returned alone. I don't know where Vicky is. The police questioned the suspects. Mrs. Summers said she'd been watching TV all day long. I was busy delivering the mail, said the postman. I didn't have time to linger in this area, and I didn't see anything. And Mr. Thomas told the police he'd been working in his home office. The detective knew at once one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was the postman. His sleeve is a bit torn, and there's a dog bite on his arm. Plus, some black fur is stuck to his pants. Victoria's dog probably tried to protect the woman. Three expensive watches have been stolen from Mr. Brown's store this year. Uh -oh. The police can't help the poor man. He decides to hire a private detective. When Laura arrives, she immediately asks for the CCTV footage from January to December. After watching it, she tells the store owner who the thief is. What has she noticed in the video? The same guy came to the store several times, in April, August, and November. And every time, he has a cast on his arm. But no broken bone would need eight months to heal. Joe had a friend, Randy, who never answered questions directly. Once, Joe sent Randy a message, inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Randy's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money. Job in job. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Randy meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. The next time Joe texted Randy was when he needed some advice. 
despite all his quirks, his friend was very good at finding solutions to difficult situations. So, Joe wrote, My girlfriend took my professional camera without asking permission, and then she accidentally smashed it. What should I do? The answer was bizarre. Not that it was unexpected. Give get. Give get. Give get. Give get. At first, Joe didn't think he wanted to follow this advice. But a bit later, he decided it was the best course of action. What was the advice? Forgive and forget. Dylan was an extremely popular guy in his office. Tall, handsome, funny, and friendly. But there was one thing that made certain people dislike him. The man had a new girlfriend every month. That Friday, Dylan came to work happier than he'd ever felt. He finally bought the car of his dreams. At lunchtime, he went to the parking lot to check in on his new toy. Oh no! His car was a mess, scratched and covered in paint. Dylan went pale and called security. He had three suspects, all of them his exes. Andrea said she didn't even know Dylan had got a new car. Catherine answered she'd been preparing a report for their boss and hadn't left her desk. And Mila told the guy she'd forgiven him long ago. Who ruined Dylan's car? It was Catherine. She had some smeared paint on her skirt, and the color is the same as the paint on the man's car. Two maids work in a small hotel in the mountains. One day, the hotel owner finds out one of them regularly steals stuff from guests, but he doesn't know which one it is. Look at these maids cleaning the rooms. Can you help the owner understand who's guilty? The maid on the right hasn't noticed the ring under the sofa. She might not be a great cleaner, but also not a thief. As for the maid on the left, she's spotted the ring and put it in her bucket. It means she's going to take it for herself after she finishes cleaning. She's the one who steals things. One afternoon, all the money was stolen from the register of a small cafe on the beach. The police have five suspects. All of them claim they haven't been to the cafe in the past hour. Look at them closely and try to figure out who's the thief. It's the guy with a cocktail in his hand. He definitely bought it in the cafe. But then, why did he lie about not visiting the place? Police officer Cheryl Adams was visiting her colleagues in another town. She was walking along the river, taking pictures to send to her husband, when a man crashed into her. They both fell to the ground. After helping Cheryl to her feet, the man started to apologize. It turned out someone had stolen his wallet, and he was trying to catch the thief. I was painting my boat, and my wallet was lying next to me. But then I got distracted, just for a moment. But when I turned back, the wallet wasn't there anymore. Cheryl understood the thief couldn't have gone far. She pulled the man to the nearby pier. There were four people there. After looking at them closely, the police officer knew who the thief was. Now it's your turn to figure it out. It's the man who's talking on the phone. There's some green paint on his feet. Julia came to have lunch in her favorite restaurant. She occupied a table near the window and put her bag in the seat next to her. Once the woman gave her order to the waiter, she went to the bathroom to wash her hands. But when she returned to the table, her bag was open and her wallet was missing. The waiter told her he had noticed only one man passing by her table. He was short, with a tattoo on his neck. He seemed to go out to the terrace. Julia rushed there and saw three people sitting at their tables. She looked at them closely and soon understood who'd taken her wallet. Who was the thief? It's the young woman on the right. You can see a wig and some men's clothing in her bag. 
Plus, she's wearing a turtleneck to cover her tattoo.